Uh, the objectives here are just to talk about some basic vocabulary of statistics and uh, be able to distinguish between things called populations and samples and parameters and statistics. Uh, I always remember that parameters go with population. They both start with the P, so it's an easy distinction. Samples go with statistic uh, or statistics. Uh, so uh, again, both start with S, so that's, a, that's a kind of an easy way to think about that. Uh, now, statistics as a science and a statistic that we collect are two different things, and that's uh, part of the learning goals of, of what we want to accomplish here. Um, getting started, uh, I think of statistics as a science of uh, collecting, analyzing, uh, and interpreting data. Uh, this textbook uses a little different uh, definition. It says it's a science of gathering, describing, and analyzing data. But uh, essentially, those are saying the same thing. Uh, statistics are the actual numerical descriptions of sample data. Uh, getting started, guys, the population is the larger group. It's the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the group that's uh, typically under study. Uh, and it says here it's the particular group of interest. Uh, a variable, I think of a variable as something that varies. Uh, it varies from person to person. So they give you a little bit more uh, formal uh, definition there. It's a value or characteristic that changes among members uh, of the population. Uh, if you, uh, for example, if we're going to look at gender in our class, uh, well, that's something that uh, there will be variation. So that would be a variable. But if you look at the professor of your class, uh, that's not a variable because uh, you're stuck with me. It's not going to uh, change uh, throughout the semester. Uh, data are just things that we collect. Uh, they're counts, measurements, observations, just depending on what we're looking at. If we're measuring height or we're looking at car color or eye color or favorite sports team, uh, it's just things that we can collect on uh, uh, subjects in, uh, in our study. And uh, census is a study in which data are obtained from every member of the population. All right, uh, so a parameter uh, goes with population. It's a numerical description of a population characteristic. And again, a sample is a subset of the population from which the data are collected. And I'll give you a picture here in just a second that'll give you a good visual and kind of let you um, uh, maybe make that a little bit more concrete. Uh, sample statistics are a dis, uh, numerical descriptions of sample characteristics. So again, guys, what I want you to know here is your population is the bigger, broader group of people, subjects, elements, cats, dogs, whatever we're uh, studying. If we get a number from the population, it's called a parameter. So if we collect data from, uh, uh, it's a, uh, 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 I'm sorry, I got distracted by my phone. Uh, it's, it's a parameter. If we collect information from a uh, sample, and again, a sample is just the subset of a larger population. Uh, if we collect information from the sample, it's called a statistic. So again, a sample statistics are numerical descriptions of sample characteristics. So again, parameter, population, sample, statistic. All right, uh, getting started. Uh, here's a, uh, something to help you visualize the relationship. Uh, you know, I think about you know, all, you know, when, when we uh, elect uh, political officials. Uh, our population of interest is typically all the people who are going to vote. And uh, we often want to know, you know, how people are going to vote so we can, uh, so uh, the people who are running for election can actually change or uh, improve or whatever uh, the way that they're trying to get their message out. Uh, so uh, a population, for example, in, in an election for the state of Ohio would be all the people who intend to vote. Uh, it would be impossible to go out and ask every single person in our population a particular question. So to do that, we go in and we take out a sample, sometimes a good sample, sometimes bad samples. We'll talk about that later. And uh, we'll use the information from the sample to generalize to the larger population. That's actually called inferential statistics. If we make an inference from the, popu I'm sorry, sorry, from the sample to the population, 
its inferential statistics. And again, a little bit more about that in just a second. Uh, so guys, getting started, uh, important table here. Uh, your population is your entire group of subjects, elements, dogs, cats, or trees. It's what we want to gain information about. Uh, the characteristics from the population uh, start with a P. It's called a parameter. Uh, parameters are unknown and parameters are fixed. So what percentage of Ohioans uh, hopes that the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers win the NBA championship? Well, I don't know, but I made a statement about an entire group, Ohioans. It's the group that the way I've posed my question, uh, it, is, it determines something I'd like to know, what percentage. Uh, the characteristic here is the percentage. So if I knew that percentage, it would be called a parameter. But in this case, it's unknown, and uh, it would be a fixed value. But we don't know what it is. We're trying to find it. Uh, sample would be part of the group. So it'd be impossible for me to go out and ask every single person in Ohio if they want the Cleveland Cavaliers to win the NBA championship. So what I would do is I would go in and take part of the group and I would ask that part called our sample that question. Uh, so I would have, if I, for example, pulled out maybe 200 Ohioans and asked them, do you want the Cleveland, Cleveland Cavaliers to win the NBA championship? Uh, they would tell me yes or no. So from that group, I would know my values from that particular group. But that wouldn't necessarily coincide perfectly with what we uh, would have from the population if we, if, if we did know that uh, value. So uh, the characteristic there would be called a call of statistic. Uh, statistic is always known because it's something you've collected from your sample. And really, really important, guys, the last statement under sample, statistics change with the sample. Now, <clears throat> one of the key things I want you to leave this class knowing is that when we go into a population and pull out a sample, that's just one of infinitely many samples that we could have pulled out of that particular size. So um, there's nothing holy, there's really nothing special or perfect about our sample other than it's the one we've got and it's the one we use. So let's just put all this together. Again, let's say I want to know the percentage of Ohioans who want the Cleveland Cavaliers to win the NBA championship. And I would think that would be high. Now, maybe some people still have uh, problems with LeBron leaving years ago, and they still, you know, whatever, haven't got over that. And they want, don't want the Cleveland Cavaliers to win because, you know, whatever. Whatever. So, but, but if, you know, if we want to address that, so my whole group would be all Ohioans. Uh, what I want to know is percentage uh, who want them to win the NBA championship. I don't know that, but that is called a parameter and it has a fixed value. So I dive into my population. Let's say I pull out 200 randomly selected Ohioans. Well, and let's say of the 200, that 190 out of the 200 say that they want the Cleveland Cavaliers to win the NBA championship. Okay, 190 out of 200. That doesn't mean that that percentage would be of our population. It just tells us that a 190 out of 200 of our sample. Because two seconds later, if I got another sample of 200, maybe 191 would want Cleveland, or maybe 184. That sample will change from sample to sample so the statistic will change uh, with the sample, okay? <clears throat> Guys, identifying population and sample, this could, should be kind of easy considering what, what we just talked about. So identify the population and sample. So in a survey, 359 college students at the University of Jackson, or at, is there really a University of Jackson? I've never heard of the University of Jackson. Okay, let's pretend there's a University of Jackson. Uh, were asked if they had tried the October flavor of the month at uh, the campus coffee shop. Uh, 83 of the students surveyed said yes. Uh, Part B says a survey of 1,125 households in the United States found that 24% subscribe to satellite radio. So guys, what would be our sample and what would be our population in these two situations? 
So guys, in the first situation, our population would uh, be all the college students at the University of Jackson, and the sample would be the 359 students who were actually surveyed. Uh, the second one, uh, the population would be all households in the United States, and the sample would be the 1,125 that were actually surveyed. So uh, that should be pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, so guys, I'm going to give you another situation. Read the following shortened survey report. I want you to identify the population. I want you to think about what the sample is and determine whether the highlighted value is a parameter or a statistic. Now, how do we determine whether it's a param the, the highlighted value is a parameter or a statistic? Well, if that number that's highlighted describes the population, then it's a parameter. If that number highlighted describes the sample, then it's a statistic. So let's see what we got in store here. It says, uh, after an airplane security scare on Christmas Day 2009, the Gallup organization interviewed 542 American air travels about increased security measures at airports. Uh, the report stated that 78% of American air travelers are in favor of United States airports using full body scan imaging on airline passengers. Well, there we go. So guys, what do you think? Uh, what's the population? Well, it looks like to me it would be all American air travelers. Our sample would be the 542 American air travelers. So that kind of gets into a good point. Whatever your sample consists of, that has to be the population from which you're generalizing. Guys, my dogs are going crazy. But that's going to happen a lot, I'll just tell you. Uh, well, I have one dog. I'll just go ahead and tell you. I have one dog. But every dog in the neighborhood seems to like to hang out at my house. And I don't understand why. And it does get annoying, especially when I'm trying to put up a video and they start barking. Okay. Um, where were we? Population, I'm saying it's uh, all American travelers, American air travelers. The sample is the 542. And uh, is that 78% a parameter or a statistic? Well, it says it's 78% of American air travelers. It doesn't say 78% of the 542 American air travelers. So I'm saying that's 78% is a parameter. So I'm saying all American tra air travelers is our population, 542 is our sample, and that 78% is a parameter. Well, got the first one right, got the second one right, and got the third one right. Gosh, I'm really good at this stuff, right? Uh, you think I had a PhD in this stuff. Branches of statistics, guys, there's two branches. One's called descriptive statistics. One's called inferential statistics. Let me tell you the difference. Uh, <clears throat> descriptive statistics is a method that I'll teach you that will come up with all fancy smancy ways of coming up with numbers that tell us important characteristics about our data. We'll come up with different plots and different ways of displaying data. Uh, our data, you know, charts and tables and, you know, all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, Descriptive statistics is the way we talk about our sample. So if I go out and get a sample of 542 American travelers, well, I might want to talk about their gender. I might want to talk about their age. I might want to talk about their ethnicity, their race. You know, it might be all sorts of things that I would want to talk about about my sample. Well, descriptive statistics measurements, descriptive statistics allows me to assess those types of uh, those types of characteristics uh, again numbers and pictures if you'll think about it uh, those will be things that I'll start teaching you next week uh, inference is where we uh, use our sample to start making an inference about a larger group called our population so if I wanted to collect information from these 542 travelers you know, and for example, maybe I want to ask them, do they feel safe traveling? Uh, <clears throat> I could use that, <clears throat> excuse me, I could use that information to generalize to the uh, population of all American travelers, okay?
So identifying descriptives and inferential. So in a news report of the state of uh, the media by Tom, Tom uh, Rosenthal, or Tile, I have no idea. And Amy Mitchell, uh, they write the following. AOL had 900 journalists, 500 of them uh, at its local patch news operation by the end of 2011. Bloomberg expects to have 150 journalists and analysts for its new Washington operation, Bloomberg government. Well, that's a confusing little setup, isn't it? So let's, uh, let's, let's think this one through. Uh, identify the descriptive and inferential statistics used in the excerpt from their article. All right. So uh, the uh, the descriptive. Um, so AOL has 900 uh, journalists, 500. So it says that 500 out of 900 of their their total journalists. Uh, were at its local patch news operation. So that's clearly a descriptive. And then by the end of 2011, Bloomberg expects to have 150 journalists for its news. So that looks like that would be part of the inference. So let's see what they've got to say here. Um, so uh, 900 journalists, 500 of them, uh, this, these are actual counts, not estimates. Uh, so those are the descriptive statistics. I got that one right. And then the other is a prediction. Uh, they're making an inference based on a given condition. Uh, so that's actually the inferential statistics. Okay. Um, first time I've seen these problems. So uh, I haven't taught out of this textbook. So uh, I'm kind of learning along with you and kind of, I mean, I, it's kind of different too. Uh, guys, the next thing we get into are different kind of types of data that we can collect and the, 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 the big, larger differentiation that you first think about is do you have qualitative or quantitative data? Now, we're going to get all sorts of fancy smancy stuff by the end of the day, but uh, think about qualitative is just non-numerical and quantitative is where it's numerical but your numbers take on a true quantitative sense. Now, that's a little bit confusing. Let me explain the difference. If I measure someone and they're 62 inches tall, then that's clearly a quantity. It's a quantitative measure because it's 62 inches is a measurement. <clears throat> However, if I go out and get someone's social, or, uh, well, social security number, those are numbers, but that's not really measuring anything. It's more of a placeholder, if you will, kind of like zip code. Those are numbers, but they're not quantitative. Like my zip code is 40311. Well, that doesn't mean any quantity of, of, of any magnitude of 40,311. It's pretty much saying you live in this county, right? Or this area in this county. So uh, we're gonna get fancy uh, with that and we're gonna break it down into discrete, continuous or neither uh, and by the particular level of measurement. So that's kind of what we want to uh, take care of in this uh, 1.2. Uh, guys, qualitative versus quantitative, let's get real uh, uh, technical with it. Qualitative is known as categorical data, uh, consists of labels and descriptions of traits. Uh, quantitative data is counts or measurements. So I don't know why they included that. <laughs> that that's just summarize what we said before. All right, gang, classifying. <clears throat> Sorry, I get. Uh, I like to amuse myself. Uh, classifying data is qualitative or quantitative. Classify the following data. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, is qualitative or quantitative? Shade. Uh, so A would be shades of red paint in a home improvement store. Well, guys, I think that's clearly qualitative. Uh, rankings of the most popular paint colors. Well, that's the first highly ranked, and that one's ranked second, and that one's ranked third, so those would be numbers, so that would be quantitative. Amount, I don't even need to read the rest of the question, but let's go ahead and do it. Amount of red primary dye necessary to make one gallon of each shade of red paint. Uh, that would clearly be quantitative. When you see the word amount, then that's uh, always going to... Uh, lead you in the quantitative sense. And numbers, 
of paint choices available, also quantitative. So guys, I'm going with qualitative, uh, quantitative, quantitative, quantitative. So qualitative. Uh, part B is qualitative. No, oh, hold on. Did I miss? Did I misread that? Let me go back to the previous one. I think I got in a hurry there. Must have misread something. Okay, rankings uh, of the most popular. Yeah, that could be in words. First, second, third, fourth, or numbers. One, two, three, four. So, guys, B would clearly be. Uh, clearly be qualitative okay my bad first mistake I've ever made uh, right there in front of you so so it doesn't again have an amount or a count uh, it has a, uh, a ranking so guys uh, qualitative uh, they're not measurements they're just uh, or counts they are just a, a ranking and it could be put into words uh, and the other two are clearly going to be quantitative because they count something and the other one measures something even your professor doesn't get them all right, especially when he doesn't think. <laughs> okay, uh, Continuous versus discrete data. Now, guys, what we're doing here is we're thinking about once we know that our data is quantitative. So we're kind of moving out of the qualitative categorical sense and just focusing totally on quantitative data. Well, it turns out that we can divide quantitative data into two different types called continuous and discrete and uh, continuous data uh, are typically measurements that we make and discrete data is things that we count so those are pretty usually easy to uh, differentiate between so that's a nice little handy dandy feature right there maybe take a picture of that with your phone and uh, keep keep some stuff around uh, so uh, qualitative, again, is categorical, but quantitative comes into two different uh, components here, discrete or continuous. I think of it continuous as anything that uh, can be measured, and discrete is just anything that can be counted. So there's got some quantitative measurements here. Let's uh, talk about whether it's a measurement or a count. Uh, temperatures are clearly measuring, uh, so that would be a measurement, so that would be continuous. Numbers of houses in various neighborhoods where well, we would count the number of houses, so that would be discrete. Uh, numbers of elliptical machines at every YMCA in your state, well, we would count those, so that would be discrete. And heights of doors is something we wouldn't count a height, we would measure a height. So guys, the answers are going to be continuous, discrete, discrete, and continuous. All right, guys, don't you, I know what you're sitting there thinking. You're sitting there thinking, if statistics stays this easy, this is going to be a cool summer. Well, it's going to get a little tougher. Sorry. All right, gang, uh, nominal. Uh, we get into, uh, 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 is, is, is a measurement of qualitative data. Uh, and uh, I think of nominal as just a clearly, uh, categorical information it's just there, there, there's no natural ordering it's just gender male or female you know ethnicity uh, political party you know you might think your political party is superior to the other one but there's no natural ordering on a nominal level of qualitative data now we're going to get into something here in just a second called ordinal data of qualitative now, ordinal means that there is a natural ordering, like freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Those are qualitative data because they are categorical, but there's a natural ordering. Gender, male, female, there's no natural ordering. So that's called a nominal level of measurement for qualitative data. So suppose all students in a statistics class were asked what pizza topping is their favorite. Explain why these data are at the nominal level of measurement. Well, clearly it's categorical, uh, pepperoni and mushroom and whatever it may be, but there's no natural ordering on those pizza toppings, so that would be nominal. <clears throat> Suppose instead that you wish to know the number of students whose favorite pizza topping is sausage. 
explain why this value is not a nominal level of measure. Well, to be a nominal level of measurement, it has to be categorical. And if we're talking about the number of students whose favorite, that would be a count. So that would be a quantitative data, uh, quantitative variable uh, that would be discrete, that we would count. Uh, so guys, when we talk about nominal level of measurement, it has to be categorical. Now, as I told you earlier, the uh, ordinal level uh, is, um, uh, can be arranged in a meaningful order, but uh, we can't add uh, uh, or, or anything to, to make any sense. Guys, the classic ordinal level is, it would be something like class rank or uh, you know, what position you came in in a race. If someone comes in you know, first place and we give them a one, the person who comes in second place, we give them a two. And if, you know, for example, at the end of this summer, I will have all of your grades calculated and you'll get a final score. You'll get a final grade, some of you 92, some 96. I will be able to order those numbers from highest to lowest and give you a class rank. One of you will be ranked first, and then somebody else will be ranked second, and someone else will be ranked third. So your class rank would be ordinal. However, your final class average, which was used to get that, would be uh, quantitative, uh, and it would be uh, a continuous measure. Um, so, um, guys, ordinal just means, again, we have qualitative data, and there's a natural ordering. So... Let's see uh, if we can determine which uh, the difference between nominal and ordinal. Again, nominal and ordinal are both categorical data, qualitative uh, uh, variables. So the seat numbers on your concert tickets, such as A23 and A24, well, guys, that dictates some sort of ordering because it's a, a you know a, a, a seat. Uh, so uh, that's clearly going to be uh, an ordinal. Uh, variable, uh, ordinal data, and the genres of the music performed at 2013 Grammys, um, I assume country, pop, uh, you know, rap, whatever it may be, uh, there's no natural ordering, so that would clearly be nominal. So A is going to be ordinal, and um, B is going to be nominal. So guys, just again, Nominal, ordinal are both qualitative, categorical. It's just a matter of whether there's a, a natural ordering uh, to the data. Now, interval measurement uh, goes back to quantitative data, and it says that the data could be arranged in a meaningful order, and the differences between the data entries are meaningful. Uh, think about height. Height is clearly quantitative if we would say, for example, we measured it in inches. And uh, it can be arranged in a meaningful order. Someone 62 inches is shorter than someone who uh, has, has height 63 inches. And the difference between those two data entries are meaningful. The first person is one inch shorter than the second person. So that would be an interval. So... The birth years of your classmates are collected. What level of measurements are these data? Well, what do you think? So we're talking about, you know, 18, 19, 20. We're talking about the year you were born. Uh, what, uh, what, 1995, 1994. So uh, birth years can be ordered. It is also meaningful to subtract years to determine the difference in age. However, the year 0 AD does not mean the beginning of time. Therefore, birth years are at the interval level. Now, we're going to get into an, um, uh, a measurement here in just a second where, we, where a, a 0 takes on a, 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 different, a different value or a different meaning, where zero turns into uh, actually the absence of value. So zero doesn't mean the absence of time. It was just a starting point. Now, data at the ratio level, well, that was right on cue, wasn't it? Uh, a measurement are quantitative. They can be ordered. Differences are meaningful, but the zero indicates an absence of something. 
So guys, the way that I tell the difference, let me let me go back here. The way that I tell the difference between um, a uh, uh, the uh, uh, interval and ratio is uh, what am I doing here? Okay, uh, is uh, is all about the zero. Um, so uh, does does the zero indicate the absence of something? Well, if it is, it's ratio. If zero doesn't indicate the absence of something, then it is um, uh, interval. So consider the ages and whole years of U.S. presidents when they were inaugurated. What level of measurements or measurement are these data? Clearly, they're going to be quantitative. What does the zero tell us? Well, I don't think we've ever had a U.S. president that was zero, but we're focusing on ages, so what do you think? Pretty clear, right? It's going to be at the ratio level. Zero indicates an absence of, well, they call it absence of life. Uh, I would call it an uh, absence of age. So uh, that would clearly be uh, the um, uh, an example of uh, of, of ratio. Yeah. As I'm distracted by something outside, sorry. Uh, so uh, levels of measurement, qualitative, quantitative. Let's add to that. Kind of a cool another one you might want to take a picture of that with your phone does um, these there are going to be certain things that we go through with that's going to just give kind of nice cool pictures that kind of uh, uh, summarize what what we spent time kind of building on and this is it uh, if you want to think about the lowest level of qualitative uh, is nominal an example of that is names hair color the color car you drive the type of car you drive you might say, well, I drive a Jaguar, you drive a Chevrolet. Doesn't matter, guys. Not a natural ordering. Uh, qualitative, again, categorical. Ordinal means there's a natural ordering to it. you got two things of quantitative, interval, and ratio. The way that I tap into that one is whether a zero is a placeholder or zero is the absence of value. And if zero is the absence of value, then you have a quantitative ratio uh, scale. Guys, I know this is a little bit confusing, uh, but, um, you know, just, you just get, you get time to practice it, and uh, just like I did years ago, and, uh, and you'll get it. You just got to spend some time with it, okay? Uh, so determine the following classifications for the data set. Uh, are they uh, qualitative um, or quantitative? That's the easy part. Are they discrete, continuous, or neither? And what level of measurement uh, do we have? So, uh, part A, finishing times for runners in the Labor Day 10K race. Uh, number B, uh, colors contained in a box of crayons. C, boiling points on the Celsius scale for various caramel candies. And D, the top 10 spring break destinations uh, as ranked by um, uh, MTV. All right, so what do you think? Times for runners, guys, I'm definitely saying that's quantitative. Uh, definitely continuous. And I think definitely scale because absence of value would tell me that uh, there was no time. Not just a placeholder. Uh, part B, colors, uh, clearly going to be qualitative. And there's no natural ordering on, uh, on um, uh, colors, so that would be uh, a nominal scale. Boiling points for various caramel candies. Uh, guys, that's clearly quantitative. It's going to be a number. Uh, it's clearly continuous. And uh, that would be interval because uh, the value of zero doesn't mean uh, absence of heat. Um, 
Part D, the top 10 spring break destinations is ranked by MTV. Uh, that's clearly going to be qualitative. And yes, uh, clearly ranked means ordinal. So let's see how we did. Uh, well, you have to trust me on that one. Uh, I don't have the answers. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's go, let's go back and talk about that again. So guys, A, I get quantitative and continuous. Um, and finishing times, uh, absence of, uh, so uh, quantitative, continuous, and uh, in scale. Uh, the second one, I get qualitative and nominal. Um, C, I get quantitative, continuous, and interval. And D, I get qualitative and ordinal.